co-founder of a, a technology startup in Oklahoma called Digital Six Laboratories. We are a wireless and cloud technology company for the enterprise. Our industry is the Internet of Things. Um, I'm here today to kind of talk to you guys about what's happened with our company in the last year, but wow, there's a lot of you here. I didn't think we would have this many show up to hear me talk, so this, this is great. There's a lot of you that don't know, uh, that weren't here when I presented last time, so you don't know anything about my company. So we're going to just take a few minutes in the beginning to go through what we do, but to start, who has heard of the Internet of Things? Yeah, six months ago if I had asked that, you would have raised your hand. Maybe, wow, how about a year? Well, we, we, we've got some people that, un, that, that, are, that are connected to the technology space. The Internet of Things is, a lot of people are saying it's the next technology revolution. After PCs, Internet, cell phones, this is the next big thing. These numbers are coming from, well, EMC and IDC research, but companies like GE and Cisco have really bought into this space. Cisco is thinking that something like, um, well, I don't remember the exact number, but it's a huge chunk of their revenue by 2020 is going to come from this space. And what's interesting about it, when you look at this, the, the projections are actually up now from 35 billion to 100 billion connected devices, by the way. And what's really interesting about this is if you look at the, the, um, the graph, the green is Internet of Things, and it doesn't include, does not include, connected cars, wearables, smart TVs, tablets, smartphones, and personal computers. So we're talking about new things being connected to the internet, not the, 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 uh, the things that we traditionally think of, like watches and phones. And what kind of things are those? Well, we're connecting trash cans, hand soap dispensers. Uh, we've got a company that makes uh, devices that put scent oil into the air uh, at, at big commercial uh, installations like casinos and hotels. They, their device, and that's a really good case study that I'll, I'll get into in a, in a minute, but their, their device uh, right now, you actually have to go up, you have to get on a ladder and crawl up to the device with a flashlight and push some buttons and look at a little display to be able to change anything on it. When they connect their device to the internet, they're able to do that stuff through the cloud. So now the, the technician can actually troubleshoot problems on that device from a cubicle at the main office. They don't even have to go out there. And that's the, their largest uh, expense that they spend on those customers on an ongoing basis are those service calls. One of the things that you think about when you think about connecting 35 billion or 100 billion devices, just think about phone numbers, right? You have an area code and seven digits. You can't even get to 100 billion devices. There's not even that many phone numbers totally, right? I mean, our infrastructure isn't set up to do it. The, the, the technology that we have today doesn't do it. The IP address space we have doesn't support it. And the connectivity technology that we have doesn't support it. So that's what our company was designed to do, was to bring new connecti connectivity technologies to market to solve some key problems that we have to solve in order to get to that 35 billion space. Um, this slide is actually backwards from the next one, but we'll go ahead and go through it. I was talking earlier about um, Cisco. So they're talking $19 trillion worth of the value in the state by 2020. Um, GE, 15 to, 10 to $15 trillion global GDP. This is the next technological wave. The, 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 uh, most of the M&A that's going on right now in the technology space is around the, uh, the IoT type companies. Most of the companies in the IoT space are web properties because that's what everybody knows how to develop, right? Big data analytics, we know how to say, okay, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna grab, you know, t 10 trillion gigabytes of data on this company's uh, enterprise performance over the last five years. We're gonna be able to drill down into that we're going to run analytics on it, and we're going to be able to give them scoring and indicators. It's going to let them run their business better. The problem that they're finding is how do they get the data? That data doesn't exist. 
right now, if you want, uh, if, if for example, if you want to know how often you're having to change the uh, soap container out in a, in a soap dispenser, somebody's written that down on a clipboard. So the only way that data gets put in the system is for somebody to manually enter it. And the truth about the data on the internet right now is most of it has been generated by a human. It's not generated by automatically by devices. That's the thing that the IoT is going to change, and that's why that slide before is talking about by 2020, 10% of all the data stored on the internet will have been generated by devices. So the challenge that you have is how do you connect these things? When you have your cell phone and you're trying to do whatever your favorite social media uh, app is, whether it's Facebook or uh, Instagram or whatever, and you have no connectivity, what do you do? You move, right? That's what people do. We go to where the connectivity is. The technologies that we have today, cellular, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, those technologies are all designed for that. We create a location where that connectivity is at, and we bring the people to it. The problem with the Internet of Things is the things can't move. The technology has to reach out and touch them. Trying to provide Wi-Fi connectivity in a bathroom in an airport is not an easy thing or an inexpensive thing to do. So range, operating range, is a very critical uh, problem that we have to solve. Wi-Fi, you're typically talking about hundreds of feet, right? So if you wanted to cover an airport, you're talking thousands of access points. Cellular gets uh, longer range, but it suffers the second problem, which is battery life. We can't have connected hand soap dispensers plugged into the wall. It, would, it, it, it won't work. They have to be powered for batteries. So we have to have a solution that gets us both the ability to reach out and touch the device, but it's also got to be something that's fire and forget so that device, once it's installed, doesn't require a lot of maintenance. We can't be changing batteries out in the devices every uh, two or three days, every two or three months, or even every year. The other thing that's um, interesting about like Wi-Fi for example, is it's very high touch. So imagine how many people have a Nest thermostat or some kind of a connected thermostat, right? So you had to go and go through the process to connect it to your Wi-Fi, right? Now do that for 10,000 devices. It's not going to be fun. I mean, it's, it, it, it's actually untenable. These technologies are not built to provide the connectivity at the scale. So we've got to have a solution that is that gets good range, that has long battery life, and is very low touch, and that's what we have developed at uh, Digital Six Laboratories. And you know, the, the perfect uh, case in point. This was actually our uh, we, we, when we came la when I came last year, uh, we were about to go to the Amazon uh, AWS event, re the reInvent event, and we had uh, the keynote uh, demonstration that they were doing. There, uh, they had just <coughs> bought a company called Telemetry, and they were rolling out their IoT platform. And a company called Sealed Air, which you guys, if you don't know who they are, you've all used their products. They invented bubble wrap. This is a big, big company. Well, they own Diversity Care and a bunch of other companies. And one of the things they make is hand soap dispensers. And so they had gotten with Amazon and said, "Why don't we connect the hand soap dispenser to your cloud?" And we'll demonstrate that. And they had two key demos they were going to do. They were going to do that one, and they, BMW was bringing a smart car. Well, BMW's smart car didn't work, so it didn't end up making it. When Sealed Air originally got this project, they, uh, they went to Qualcomm and said, hey, we need a Wi-Fi solution that we can get long battery life. They hired them in February of 2015. They came to us in September of 2016, and our, we had just got our stuff working, and we were starting to sample it to people, and said, hey, you know, we don't have anything working yet. Can, can you get this done? And the problem they were having was they couldn't have long enough range to where they could cover the floor space at the venue in Vegas, and the batteries were dying, like, every day. They weren't even getting six months of battery life out of it. So in six weeks, we were able to build Connected, 50 connected hand soap dispensers for them. Uh, these are still working. Uh, they'll get five years of battery life off two AA batteries. Uh, we were able to get 2,500 feet of range out of these inside of the venue in Vegas. Uh, and that venue was terrible. 
the floors were made of metal, the ceiling was made of metal, the walls were made of metal. It was, it was a hostile, hostile environment. We got those 50 all over. The reason that they wanted to connect the hand soap dispenser is that they actually wanted to do a couple of things. The first thing they wanted to be able to do was change the way that bathrooms are cleaned in, in large venues. Right now, if you have an airport or a big hotel or whatever, bathrooms are cleaned on some kind of a schedule. But the problem is that based on how the venue is used, especially at an airport, you never know which bathroom is going to be used the most. And so the schedule never ever matches up with the real need. So you end up having people cleaning bathrooms that don't need to be cleaned and not cleaning bathrooms that do need to be cleaned. What they were able to prove with their initial uh, proof of concept with the hand soap dispenser was that just by catching how many times somebody pumped the hand soap dispenser, they could correlate that. That was the key correlating, or, or what we call feature engineering. That was the feature they were looking for that would let them know when the bathroom needed to be cleaned. And so they were able to then take the scheduling from, let's do it on a schedule, to do an acute-based scheduling, where now the uh, cleaning crew gets a text message on the phone that says, bathroom XYZ is the next bathroom that needs to be cleaned. So that's